Japanese are the biggest savers in the world. And I'm Japanese, I'm fourth generation. They're not too bright. Right. Why do you keep saving when they're printing it? You know, when I'm in Japan, that's what I mean by fear. They're so afraid because the Japanese, they're very good, good culture, but they do as they're told. Being an entrepreneur, I was in the rock and roll industry. And back in the 80s, I started studying with a man named Dr. R. Buckminster Fuller, best known for the geodesic dome. So in 67, I hitchhiked from New York City to Montreal, Canada to see Expo 67. And Buck, Buckminster Fuller's dome was the U.S. pavilion there. So Ex Expo 67 was the, the, the world's fair on the future. Mm -hmm. Fuller was a futurist, but I didn't meet him there. And then back in 1981, I finally met him in Kirkwood, California on a seminar called The Future of Business. And so I studied with him 81, 82, and 83. And, every, and, and I was a hardcore make money entrepreneur. And one day Fuller asked me, he says, what's your life's purpose? And I said, make money. And how did I know that was the wrong answer? <laughs> And he scolded me, you know, because here I'm in rock and roll and sex, drugs, rock and roll. I don't do drugs, but I was trying for the rest. <laughs> and he goes, it's a waste of a good mind just to make money. I'm going, what do you mean? You know, he says, I, I thought we were supposed to make money. And he just challenged my paradigm, the way I looked at world and the business. He says, and, and I covered this in fake. And the question he asked me, he says, why don't you do what God wants you to do. I went, what? He says, look, humanity is evolving. And you have to ask yourself, what does God want done? Not, not what Robert Kiyosaki wanted done. What does God want done? And he kind of scolded me in front of the whole class. You know, I'm going, so what's wrong with rock and roll? He goes, it's about you. It's your passion, but it's not God's purpose. I'm not really religious, I'm not pumping that. So the question, you know, I had to ask myself, what does God want done in the evolution of life? I grew up in Hawaii. So all of the pieces of the puzzle, and when Fuller scolded me back in 83, the pieces of the puzzle and my life started to come together. And I understood what he was saying then, you know, he says, well, maybe we should stop ripping people off. <laughs> You know, it might be a good thing. Mm. And, you know, a question I ask all over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. And that's not a mistake. That's not an accident. I knew that. Most people know that. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. So if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which came out in 1997, it's what the rich teach their kids about money the poor middle class do not. And so, and I had already retired, I, you know, I made enough money at 47, so I didn't have to work again for the rest of my life. And I said, now what do I do with the rest of my life? And so that's when I, I came out with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the cash flow game, because poverty hurts. I mean, I don't like it. And I don't like that our academic system's so corrupt. You know, we, we know the banking system's corrupt. We know politics is corrupt, but ac but academics is just as corrupt. You know, I, I was on I was on CNN calling the crash of 2008. I said Lehman's going down. You can check it out. I said to Wolf Blitzer, Lehman's going down, and he goes, oh, and he got all he got kind of flustered because they're not allowed to say stuff like that. Right. And we had Gene Chatsky, who represents Wall Street. You know, the the, the mutual funds and 401k guys. She goes, oh. Can't they don't that. want me to, they don't want what we know out there. So that's why fake is fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. And the asset part, you know where that comes from. It's the city of London, Wall Street, the derivatives markets, LTCM, long-term capital management records. And all of us that know are kind of getting out. That's why I love Jim Records. I had dinner with him the other night. That's why we're talking. This is what's really going on. But our school system will never tell us that because they're part of the process. Fake money, fake teachers, 
fake assets. Mm -hmm. They're all one scenario. And that's what Bucky Fuller's kind of inspired me to do back in 83. He says, you know something. What do you know? Share it. What does God want done? Or as Martin Luther King says, I just want to do God's will. So what drives me on in my health is not the best, but the will, you know, the spirit keeps, keeps me on. Well, every time I, you know, I do a lot of speaking to the masses out there, you know, Lehman doesn't invite me in because we're gone, but they go, well, what, what, you know, it's so risky. What you're saying is risky. I said, what I do isn't risky for me, but it's risky for you. And when somebody says, what is risk? You have to look in the mirror. Do you know what I mean? For me to fly in Vietnam, that was high risk. But the higher the risk, the more you have to study. You know that, I know that. So if you're not going to study, you're not going to practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy, you know, 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets, because they only make Wall Street or the city of London rich. Just watch where the cash is flowing. Follow the money. Yeah. It's not making the poor middle class rich. You know, all Wall Street in America has done is rip off the pensions because, you know, pensions are the biggest pool of money in America. And states like Kentucky, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Hawaii are going bankrupt because Wall Street went in and just sucked all the cash out of their pensions. So the school teachers like my dad, the firefighters and police officers, they have no retirement now. And so that's why it's fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. They're the same system. And that's what Bucky Fuller encouraged me years and years ago. He says, you better tell the world what you know. And that's what I mean. And you know, in, in uh, Paris today, they have the yellow jackets. Yeah, the protesters. What's going on in America today are red for Ed. All these school teachers are putting on red t-shirts because they know they're being screwed. They're protesting and all this. Their pension plans have been sucked dry by Wall Street. And what do they do? They put hedge fund managers in to manage the pensions. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You put a hedge fund guy in to manage the biggest pot of money called the school teachers, firefighters, and police officers pensions? They just sucked all the cash out of it. And the teachers are going, what happened to us? But because they don't know anything, it's red for it. They're out there protesting in mass all over the United States. But you don't hear about it. They talk about the Yellow Jackets. They don't talk about Red for Ed. So this whole thing is coming apart right now. And it goes back to the question I have, I have always asked, why doesn't our school teach us about money? Because Wall Street won't let them. Right. Very big difference in mentality here. So we have, in America today, we have you know, even Ray Dalio of Bridgewater one of the biggest hedge fund guys in America, he's saying this gap between the rich and everybody else is too wide. Well, you could have seen that back in 1972 because the moment you corrupt money, the very thing that everybody works for, saves, counts on, they were screwed anyway. And our school systems, fake money, fake t-shirts, fake assets, part of that same system. Government, education, Wall Street or City of London. So I've had a habit ever since then or a policy if I find out there's a great teacher and a great teacher is somebody who comes from the inside, not the outside. You know, when I was in flight school, I swear to God, my, pilot, my instructors could fly because I flew with them. But in school, you don't know if your instructor is for real or not. That's where the fake teacher comes from. When I was in my MBA program, I was still in the Marine Corps, came back from the war. I'm in the MBA program, and back then, this, this is 73 now, and the students were spitting on me, yelling at me, University of Hawaii, you know. I'm, I'm there, I was stupid enough to go in my Marine Corps outfit, my, my flight suit, and they were yelling at me, baby killer and all this. I'm sitting in this classroom, and my MBA accounting teacher doesn't know accounting, you know, I'm going, I'm going nuts. I'm not an accountant, but I knew he wasn't an accountant also, so I took him on and said, I said, are you an accountant? He goes, I have a master's in accounts. I said, that's not the question. Are you an accountant? 
I have a master's in account. You're a fake. You don't know what you're talking about. And to this day, when I listen to what people are teaching kids about accountancy, it's bad accountancy. 